Welcome to the show. I'm James. I'm David. I'm Riley. And today we're discussing rings of power. <laughs> <laughs> rings of power. No. No again. He's in it. Uh, episodes one and two. In we'll laugh. We'll argue. We might get a little too into it. But at the end of the day, they're just uh, whatever this is. <laughs> two episodes of a TV show. Based on a book that's Wait, more like an encyclopedia. Was that, that a again. spoiler alert? Yeah. Big spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. I mean, I feel like anyone who's watching this would probably be watching the show as well, but... We'll see. Don't spoil it. Watch Next week, first. Galaxy Quest. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> it's David <laughs> Favorite Movie Time. Heck yeah. We, the audience loves when we cover David Favorite Movies. I, it's I have great taste. That's one of my favorite movies as a kid. It's fantastic. I actually it's never the, watched it. What? It, it is the best Star Trek You are in movie. for a treat, Or James. is it? It looked lame to me when the alien in the trailer, he's like, mm, we need your help. I was like, uh, I'm out of here. But I didn't understand satire. Because I was a child. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. Okay. But this week... It's Rings of Power all day. So David, give me a rating out of 10 is what I would normally say, except it, you want to do something different this week. I want to do something different. Because it's it. only the first two episodes. I don't think it's appropriate to rank it. Instead, I'll give a percentage likeliness that I'm going to keep watching. Uh, I realize now that my slogan doesn't exist. Uh, <laughs> I started it, so I'll start the sen- what I did and then uh, we'll end there. There are as many reasons to dislike Rings of Power as there are to like it. That's a full sentence. That's a full sentence. That's it. Mm. So, <laughs> what's your percent likelihood to continue As watching? 100%. I am actually excited to keep watching this. It's not like the best show ever. There's a lot of flaws, and I'm mm. sure we're going to get into it. But it's nice to have like a good fantasy show that isn't trying to shock you mm. at every turn. With penises? With penises okay, and murder, and it's like constantly trying to... Like make you suffer. Yeah. And that's what I like about this show is it's a nice show to watch and it's got really cool effects and like okay stuff happening. There's some good stuff, but I'm excited to keep watching. As in it's fantasy before Game of Thrones came out of the scene. Yes. Everything <laughs> now is just like we got to be like Game of Thrones, yeah. but everybody wa- like people like fantasy, but what they really want is fantasy with boobs. Yeah. <laughs> well, and like dead babies and shit. Yeah. Riley? Horrible things. I don't mind the boobs. Well, sure. I don't like the no babies. one does. You give us, <laughs> Riley. You give us whatever you want to give us. Uh, I did give it a rating. My slogan. It's not really a slogan, but it's like a summary. Well, it's more Lord of the Rings that feels kind of Lord of the Ringsy, but also very Disney Star Warsy. Uh, I'm giving it a six point five out of ten. Those. That's just for the first two episodes. Okay. I. I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. I think I was like, I'm going to watch this because we're doing it for the podcast. Um, otherwise, I probably would have waited and, to, and saw what people said about it before I checked it out. Mm-hmm. Um, so I went in expecting like just middle of the road. I, I, I was like, it could be really good. It could be really bad. Uh, I enjoyed it more than I expected to. But at the end of the day, there are still some things that are I'm like, okay, this is fan fiction at the end of the day. You know what I mean? 100%. Tolkien, but it's enjoyable. And is he rolling in this? They've gotten a lot of the. They've gotten a lot of the stylistic things right. Yeah, that's enough. James, go. Imagine the Lord of the Rings, but even slower <laughs> and longer, <laughs> and definitely less compelling. On the bright side, though, at least nearly all the main characters are still white. Huh? Okay. <laughs> Just joking. Being That's facetious. Irony. Being facetious there. I don't want. I think too much oxygen has already been taken up by the race discussion on this yeah. project. But um, I feel like we do have to talk about it. But let's uh, just save it for the back half. Let's focus on the yeah. show. Yeah. Um, what's interesting about this one is that coming from, I think most people are coming from deep familiarity with the movies and then when you see it as a tv show it really is easy to see the differences between a movie and a tv series you're like oh there's there's a main character but not like the protagonist Mm -hmm. and like i can see a story is forming but it takes three hours before (laughs) i know what the show is about whereas in the movie it's like we're 10 minutes in it's frodo the ring let's go and i like that kind of pace Uh, this that's why i'm finding the show just like kind of less compelling but there's enough baggage being brought in by the viewer like we know from the the intro of the lord of the rings movies that they they make these rings and then it all goes to shit the rings are distributed among these different races and then the story of the lord of the rings ensues so bringing that in Keeps me interested, right? Because yeah. I'm reading into things and I'm waiting for that eventuality. You so, have some plot point that you know is happening at the end yeah. that's kind of pulling you towards it, regardless of what they're well, doing. Well, there's like yeah. those exactly. moments where it's like a panning shot over the army and it lands on Sauron, and you're like, oh yeah, I like Sauron. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Sauron. Remember Sauron? <laughs> Sauron's <laughs> all spiky. Uh, <laughs> spiky boy. Anyways, 
Let's talk more about it after this message from our sponsors, starting with Vessi Footwear. Do you hate wet socks as much as I do? No, you don't. Oh. I hate it. I hate the sound even. James. <laughs> Vessi Footwear makes lightweight, breathable, and most importantly, water-resistant shoes, so no more wrinkly toes. You ever look at your toe? Anyway, the, the Dynamex <laughs> material not only keeps your feet dry, keeps the trench foot out, but keeps the, them warm in the winter and cool in the summer. The imagery. The stretchy design shows that comfort is at the forefront, or forefoot, at times, <laughs> making you forget you're even wearing shoes. This is a new copy. This is... <laughs> Vessi makes cruelty-free products products right down to the glue. Their shoes are 100% vegan. Your feet deserve a little treat. So click the link below and grab a pair today. But you won't eat our meat, but you glue with our feet. Do not let your feet eat meat. Remember that Simpsons episode? Nope. Thanks to Secret Lab for sponsoring this video. Secret Lab chairs are designed to keep you comfortable for those long nights of work and play and Lord of the Rings rewatches. Their Titan Evo 2022 series chair offers four-way lumbar support. It comes with a magnetic memory foam head pillow and it's offered in different upholstery. It's like hybrid leatherette, soft weave fabric, and Nappa leather, the official leather of the proto hobbits. <laughs> Best of all, a five-year extended warranty is included with a 49-day return policy. You're covered if anything goes wrong, so learn more about Secret Lab at lmg.gg slash secretlabtjm. Thanks to Storyblocks for sponsoring today's video. Ever needed a quick clip for a video but didn't have the capacity to make it yourself? Storyblocks helps you bring your stories to life without sacrifice due to time, budget, or resources. There's over a million royalty-free assets for you to choose from, including 4K HD footage, Adobe templates, music, images, and a wide array of diverse and inclusive content. We're talking Indian hobbits. There are <laughs> subscriptions for every budget, so you can choose the plan that works for you. From their unlimited all-access plan that gives you unlimited video and audio downloads to enterprise licensing so your entire company has access to assets as you need them. We actually use Storyblocks at Linus Tech Tips as we don't always have time to go out and shoot the perfect B-roll footage. So take your videos to the next level, the level that our videos are at, by checking out Storyblocks today at storyblocks.com slash TJM. Do, 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 do. Ah. I thought that was a Rick Roll for a second there. <laughs> All right. What happens in the first two episodes, Riley? Thousands of years before the events of The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, but in a different timeline, separate from the books or movies. Did you know? Different canon. They're saying? This is a different canon uh, because of rights and stuff. We'll get into that. Oh. Uh, the ancient elf Galadriel vows to continue her brother Finrod's search for Sauron, servant of the defeated lo Dark Lord. Can I just Morgoth. say Finrod is a good porn star name? <laughs> Finrod, yeah. Well, he's got a pinner. He does the, he does Finn, the like swimming, I don't know. swimming scenes. All right, go ahead. The High King Gilgalad, Gilgalad, is kind of sick of her, insisting that Sauron lives, so he sends her and her elf squad to sail to the undying lands of Valinor. But at the last second, she jumps ship and starts swimming back to Middle-earth. Meanwhile, the elf Arondir and his forbidden love interest, the human healer Bronwyn, discover that orcs are attacking human villages. Arondir is captured while Bronwyn convinces the townspeople to leave their village after slaying an orc with her son Theo, who also finds a broken sword bearing Sauron's mark. Pokey. Elsewhere, two curious Harfoots, Nori and Poppy, discover a strange man inside a meteor crater. He's confused and can't speak their language, but uses magic and fireflies to indicate he's searching for a constellation of stars. And the half-elf half Elrond is sent to help the great smith Celebrimbor build a powerful new forge, so he seeks help from his friend, the dwarf prince Durin. Durin is pissed that Elrond missed 20 years of his life, but Durin's wife, Disa, convinces him to hear Elrond's proposal. Back to Galadriel now, she comes across human survivors of a shipwreck who are promptly eaten by a sea creature, save for Halbrand of the Southlands, who explains that he was fleeing from orcs. Man and elf work together to survive a storm aboard a raft and are eventually rescued by... A silhouette. A sil <laughs> The shadow people. The, the shadow sea people. So Elrond's That's the Numenorians. You said El Elrond's half elf? Yeah. What? what? Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's, he's half elf. He's descended from Baron and Luthien, who were the uh, original? Or I think there were two lineages of half elf people. Uh, Baron and Luthien and another one, I forget. What other half are they? Human. What? what do Why you does mean? he get to live so long? That's not, Beca oh, that's because, not fair. because this is the gift of the half elf. Uh, the half elf can choose to be immortal or uh, mortal. Wow, I'm glad you're here. And Elrond chose to be immortal, but his brother Elros chose to be mortal, and he who would want to live with a name like that? More like Elrond. <laughs> and Elros, uh, half elf becoming a mortal, was the basis for the Num Numenorians, I believe. Oh. oh. 
That might be tell wrong, me, but I think it's right. Tell me about the Silmarils. I don't know much about the Silmarils. Okay. I never read the Sil- Silmarillion, but that doesn't matter because this show, as I alluded to, is not based off the Silmarillion, yes. as many ma- might think it is. It's based I really off thought it was. Because they needed, Amazon needed separate license rights. They needed to license separate rights to access the Silmarillion content. Yeah. So they only have rights to what Tolkien wrote about in the Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, and the appendices. Oh. So this is all based on the kind of like background, you know, notes in the bibliography, notes uh, That's crazy. <laughs> uh, about this period. Wow. That Which, means there's someone out there who was like, fuck you, Jeff Bezos, <laughs> and all your Amazon money. Get well, out of the, here. Well, no, it's, the rights it's, just got handed over to Embracer Group? Who was yeah, it? Yeah. So, so this is, I mean, f- we're talking about Mike Myers, actually. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is actually, I mean, okay, so this is actually really interesting and good background to know going into this because the Tolkien estate uh, has never, like, no one has owned the whole rights to Tolkien. Every time there was an adaptation, they had to license the rights from the Tolkien estate. And so... Uh, that's the same thing that's happening here because it was prior to the Embracer group. But the Embracer group has now acquired the Tolkien estate, or they, the they've acquired rights. the rights to so they everything. They own the rights. So they own all the rights. They're not the books. No, they do. Own I'm the not books. the publishing rights. But they were oh. all of them deceived. Okay, maybe for there was another rights. group. I forget. Who had the rights. <laughs> but basically, basically if, if anyone who wants to make a Lord of the Rings thing, like the, the situation is the same, but instead of licensing directly from the Tolkien estate, now yeah. they'll have to license it from the Embracer group. Did you guys know how much Amazon paid for the rights to produce the show? No. Uh, two hundred and fifty million dollars. Wow! So this show just is just the rights. Just the rights. The show yeah. is current. Thought, the whole budget was five hundred million. It's currently estimated at about a billion. Uh, I mean, that's and not so the budget. I you mean. Yeah, the budget. So I can't yeah. imagine that is not the most expensive show of all time. Maybe the most expensive media, like single entity media thing? entity. I mean, they probably production? figured they probably figured that it's that's cheaper than buying the the whole thing, like buying the franchise. In the, in the same way that Disney bought Lucasfilm. Well, what Man. I was under the impression is that they they would not sell any of the rights. Like that was just not a choice that was available. But they so, are going to have fifty million dollars. They're going to have to make so many seasons of this. Yeah, holy. Are they? Uh, going I don't to know have... if I want that. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, they're they're planning for five seasons. <sighs> All right, let's Too talk many. about the show. I think the like number one, everyone will agree, best thing they did in this show is the production design. Yeah, yes. like. Kaza Doom, man, it's like so sick. Kaza Doom is super cool. It looks yeah. so dope in it's there. It's great, it's especially because like I was talking to my brother about this, and he was like, "Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that uh, the Lord of the Rings is like post-apocalyptic in a way, hmm. because you find all these ruins. You find like they get to Kaza Doom, but it's been like destroyed by orcs. But it's like almost like a zombie vibe. Like uh, you know, a great evil is coming. The the land is dying. It's it's kind it's kind of post apocalyptic. Sure. And in this one, we see. Middle Earth yeah, in its prime. Even when um, the ring is found by like Gollum, like in that um, Galadriel reads that like the preamble in in Fellowship of the Ring it says the ring sat at the bottom of that riverbed for four thousand years. <laughs> yeah, right? That, yeah. That's post apocalyptic AF. Yeah, man. I was trying to like look up the timeline because I'm so, I'm a I'm a bit of a Lord of the Rings nerd, but like not nearly as much as some other people. I was yeah. talking to the guys in the engineering team, and and they were like, actually this and this and this, and I was like, I didn't ha- I had no idea. I was I was schooled, but uh, I was trying to look at the timeline, and I'm like, how long are the years? And it's confusing because when you go to the like the one wiki or whatever, they that all the ages have their own dating scheme. Uh. So it's like TA third age, fifteen hundred or whatever. It could be thousands of years before FA first age, fifteen hundred. But like when you just glance over yeah. things, you it's hard to. And this show is set during the second age, right? Yes. Yes. Um, so anyways, there's like, probably, I don't even, I don't even know, like 10,000 years or or more, like on the whole span of things, but they're compressing this timeline so that things are happening in the second age quicker and closer together than they do in the actual, the actual canon. Um, sorry. We're talking about the the costumes costumes are good. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I think like the, it's so easy to get on a tangent with lore. There's some really good design stuff too. Like when they're in the the elf forest and it's like the elf warriors that have died that are carved into that the trees. Cool. Yeah. It looks so cool. There's like those little details that are there. I know some people are like zeroing in on some costumes to be like, it looks like tinfoil. This looks like a costume shop yeah. shop. And I'm like, no, it doesn't. No. And people use like 
shitty low bitrate Twitter video to criticize a 4K HDR produced yeah. thing. And I'm like, everyone just chill. I feel like the obvious... Did you guys watch Wheel of Time? No. No. Okay, so I watched... I think I watched the vast majority of it. I might have skipped the last like couple episodes because I was just like, I'm not. I don't care about this. Um, but uh, that show was really bad with the with the clothes and stuff. Like armor felt looked like kind of plasticky and stuff. But in this one, I'm like, that was that was initially what kind of blew me away. I was like, this at least in some of the stylistic elements, it really feels like a continuation of the movies. It looks expensive too. Like the yeah. close up shot of the that hammer that Elrond was using to do that competition. It's like that hammer looked awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And like even just some of the shots and stuff that they use are really uh what am I what am I thinking of? What's the word? Beautiful. It's, it recalls the the Lord of the Rings. Redulent. Redulent. I like that. I like that. Sure. Stinks of uh, Jackson. In, in that scene particularly when they're like hitting the rocks with the hammers and stuff and it's like going up into the audience members like these super wide angle shots going up on people's yeah. noses <gasps> and whatnot and they're like yeah! yeah. I'm just like this feels super it's, and it's like you can, it's super transparent that they are like emulating that, but I appreciated it. I think it's almost to a fault where this starts to have the a little bit snake yeah. kind of eating its own tail, where it's like, oh, we're trying to recreate the Jackson thing, and so they can't produce anything that feels wholly original. I think mm -hmm. they did though. There's a couple cuts in particular that were really that stood out to me, and they they seem like a new direction. For example, and this was like a hit pick of mine, but um, when. She's about to decapitate that orc, and then it just hard cuts to her slamming the head on the table. Yeah, that was cool. It was like that. That was a new voice. Yeah, yeah. and it was an awesome cut. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the one of the first shots. Well, after the prologue, which was too long, uh, but one of the first shots after that is the elves climbing the ice. And at first, I was kind of like, when I saw that shot in the trailer, I'm like, that looks like a video game. The, yeah, uh, this doesn't feel very good. But then it goes into this sequence where it's like they clearly like built something and we're seeing like elves like in the second age, you know, in their prime, like climbing up this ridiculous mound that you would like, it seems like superhuman and they have capes and it's blowing in the wind and the the music was swelling like yeah. really well. I was like, I th that was a really good intro to the whole thing. You know, it, for me, I was, I, I actually had opposite feelings. On that ice pit? Yes. I was oh, actually man. thinking, see, this is exactly <laughs> why no one will care about this show. Because hmm. I was hmm. thinking... When we have shots like this in the Lord of the Rings, uh, that you know they're walking right before they go to Moria and they're trapped on the mountain, and we're like, oh man, those poor little hobbits out there against the elements. This is so hard, and they're on this crazy mission. Oh, yeah. And I feel for them and relate, and like that looks like awful. Whereas here, I'm like, oh, here's these superhuman people who can just easily climb up this, and they are on a mission I know nothing about, and I don't care. Uh, <laughs> I was just like, look at them climb for. God knows why. Okay, you know what? I, I take that. I'm not going to argue really with that because that that is, I'd say that's valid because the reason why we should care about these things is because what it means, and this was, there there wasn't a ton of meaning here. It just kind of looked cool and felt Lord of the Rings-y. So yeah. I was like, I think I was like. If anything, we were already <laughs> told that their mission is meaningless. So I'm yeah. just like. Were we? I'm not sure if, if we knew by then that they were searching no, for nothing, it, but. It was like we knew that. People were saying, oh, I don't know if Sauron's still out there, but Galadriel's still looking for him. So I didn't, at yeah. that point, we were like, I don't know. But right. I feel like that to me, uh, let's stay on the positive. Let's stay on the positive. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I think I came in feeling kind of skeptical, and I was like, all right, let's see what you got, Amazon's Rings of Power. <laughs> and then when they hit me with some of this, like, really reminiscent, that was the word I was looking for earlier, things that are really reminiscent of the original mm. uh, Lord of the Rings trilogy, I was like... Okay, like maybe. Like those Elven cityscapes. At the very yeah. least, yes. Yeah, they looked really great. Those uh, are probably just full CG now. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it would be cool if they did like bigatures Miniatures, or whatever, yeah. but I'm That's sure. That's a lot of work. I, ho I hope they did. Apparently, Weta Workshop was involved at some point. Good. Um, I don't know if they were, if they stayed involved, but um, anyways, I really appreciate it at the very least. Uh, even if the whole show turns out to be horrible, I really appreciate that. Clearly, there are people with love for the original trilogy who are really trying. You can tell that they're really trying yeah. to do right by at least the style of it, you know? And I, think, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's definitely the strength of the show is the <clears throat> aesthetic and the atmosphere and all that stuff. What do you guys think of, like, the characters themselves? I don't love Galadriel that much. She's, to me, clearly the main character. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, okay. I think it's interesting to kind of take her out of being an iconic character into being like this young kind of brash version of herself. And it's I know some people are mad about that, that it's like, oh, she's supposed to be like, you know, a, a proud elf. But I think it's cool that we're seeing this younger 
side of her, like this totally unfinished yeah. version of her. But it's kind of weird because I mean, I'll say I'll say uh, in any situation where you have like in these immortal characters and in the Lord of the Rings, kind of all the elves, with the exception of Legolas, are depicted as sort of these like otherworldly. We don't really know how what it's like to be an elf. Uh, we see them from afar and they have cool weapons and architecture and they were like the old people. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they're mysterious, and any time you take like a mysterious character in one front in in one entry, and then like we're gonna flesh them out more, we're gonna show you their daily life. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be more mundane. It's gonna be it's gonna take some of the magic out of like it. The Jedi, sure, yeah. And uh, the more we learn about the Jedi, the more we were like, hey, wait, actually, the Jedi sense. are bad, <laughs> <Yeah>. maybe. <laughs> um, and so I definitely felt some of that, and it's a, like a little disappointing to sure. have some of that magic taken away. Well, I think that I really felt that with Elrond, mm. where there's like this darkness in movie Elrond, where you're like, oh, like what what happened to him? Why is he this way? Why is he so jaded? Right. And now we're seeing him like this n- nicer. Yeah. When he was first introduced, I was like, that's not Hugo Weaving. This guy doesn't have the edge. No. The casting was really interesting. Well, they probably just watched Game of Thrones. And like he's a young Ned Stark. He could be a young Elrond. Uh, oh, is that the guy who played young, young Ned Stark? Ned Stark yeah. I will say that Elrond's probably my favorite character in the show. I like him. I uh, I just my first impression was like I feel nah. like a big a big reason why I like Elrond in the show though is that he goes and meets Durin and Durin's wife and stuff, and he has like that kind of more charming plot. He's like this diplomatic kind yeah. of yeah, and he's it's a like politician. Yeah, exactly. More to do, whereas Galadriel so far has had kind of I think the most boring plot. Like I was excited when she was gonna go to Valinor. I was like, oh cool, I like this more. Uh, abstract side of Lord of the Rings. Like, I was expecting the show to be first stage, like, more primordial version of the world and not this kind of more formed mm. version. And so I was excited for, like, oh, we're going to do, like, weird stuff. Yeah, and then, yeah. But then it goes back to the ocean plot and I find it super stupid. And, like, she's <laughs> Oh, that second through. episode when she's on the raft? That, that sucks. Yeah, that, that's kind of annoying. I was like, this is episode two, guys? Damn. Yeah. This is not good enough. They, like, no. I, you know, you watch episode one and you're like, man, hardly other anything ever, hardly anything happens. And then episode two comes around and you're like, oh, literally, almost nothing happens. <laughs> not on that storyline, anyway. <laughs> Well, on any of the storylines, everyone just kind of stays you know, where they the, are. The the elf romance, elf human romance. There's like stuff happening there. They're kind of like discovering. The oh yeah, stuff. that's true. Yeah, yeah, that one I think is the most interesting. I don't love those characters as much. Like I don't feel as invested yeah. in them. Well, Let's they get don't into give them. you a lot. Let's get into them. But I wanted to say something about Elrond because oh, yeah. I kind of missed that thing. Uh, I was initially jarring to me to see the different characterization of him mm. because, as we're saying, he's really jaded and kind of like. Whoa. But that makes sense, right? It does make sense, but it is jarring still to be like, this doesn't really feel like Elrond it because he's like he's Elrond. almost like a completely different character. He's like, hello, my friend. <laughs> oh, oh, stop your silly quest, yeah. you know. But in Fellowship, though, it's like a a couple thousand years later, and b what is what does he say in Fellowship? It says like, I was there the day men right, failed. Right, like, right, I right. saw some shit. That shit doesn't happen yet. Yeah, and and the more the show goes on, I I have I got used to him, and I like to. I, by the end of it, I was like, all right, I'm on board with this. I think he's just, because I want to see the arc. Yeah, I I think that they have a lot of potential with him, <clears throat> and I'm excited to see what they do. But it it's. It's one of those things where, like, I just don't really connect those two characters in my head. It's just two separate well, they, beings. I feel like they could have done a little bit better of a job trying to find someone who looked sort of well, like Hugo Weaving. And I found that interesting that they've gone with this aesthetic of elves having short hair. Because, like, that's such an iconically Lord of the Ring thing yeah. that set the elves apart. And there's a few different hair. elves with short hair. Yeah, and I, I couldn't see how they came to that creative choice where they're like, oh, like, you know... Like we want to distinguish them. They've grown. They've become the more hair wise. grows so slowly. Yeah, you never cut it. Like some some <laughs> some the... creative distinction. Yeah, but it makes them feel very much, especially with the characterization, as just humans with pointy ears. Yeah, I I can understand maybe like Arondir having a shaved head because he's like a military guy. Yeah. Uh, but I don't see why Elrond would would have short hair. The other reason the the other thing about maybe explaining why Elrond feels kind of different. Like he feels more human than other elves. Like he's kind of like he doesn't give me the sort of like mysterious like Ethereal kind of. yeah. Um but he's a half elf, so maybe that's something. Maybe he's like, ah, I don't feel as elvish hmm. today. I'm elfish. <laughs> it's funny. I I feel like the show part of its big appeal is that it gives you kind of character name characters that you haven't seen in the flesh, you know, like Celebrimbor and stuff. But I, I never was like, that's cool. That's a cool take on Celebrimbor. I'm like, what is that again? That's uh, the city. No, that's no. the dude who made the sword. 
Andril, or is that oh yeah, okay. the Springs he, of Power? He's the guy who forged the. Did he forge the Silmarils? I'm not sure, but he's the he, other half of your character, the esteemed in, engineer uh, guy. He's the in Smith. The war yes. of in a what is it? Shadow of Mordor. <laughs> That's how I know him. <laughs> Uh, he's the guy. Oh, right. He's in shot. I never played yeah, those he's games. The, he's like your phantom side. Um, he, he's going to make the rings of power, he's going uh, to. under the influence of Sauron. Okay. Uh, wow. It's just, well, but like, this is kind of the thing when you go into this, it's like all of this lore has been established. So you're, yeah. if you're so, going to the show being like, no spoilers, no spoilers. If it's you like, go to the Reddit, okay, but on, on the Reddit for like r slash rings of power, there's two different sticky threads. There's a, for people who have read the book and for those who haven't. So in, oh. in the thread for it's only what you've seen on the show so far. And the other one is the like the kind of stuff that you just said. Ah, interesting. This is saying that he only made the first the the three elvish rings of power. But I thought I thought he did all of them. I'm confused about that. So I'm not going to say one way or the other. But uh, yeah, he's, he's a smith and he's making he makes at least the elfin rings of power. But I mean, even if you haven't, you don't have any appendices or Silmarillion knowledge if you're just like me i've only seen the lord of the rings trilogy i didn't even watch the hobbit because i heard it was bad and i didn't want to tarnish my view of lord of the rings so but even with the knowledge we get from the trilogy we know they're just from the prologue they're gonna make these rings yeah. and so when they're like oh we're gonna make a forge you're like they're gonna make the they're gonna use the forge <laughs> to make for the, the rings, rings. <laughs> and it's probably Sar sauron putting them up to all this well, and it's gonna go bad so i yeah. think that's my biggest problem and this is kind of an inherent problem to prequels is this doesn't set up stakes outside of the Lord of the Rings. Like it's exactly the same stakes. They're just doing a longer ramp up. But well, that doesn't it. mean it won't be good. Like Rogue One suffers from that same thing, and, and everyone likes Rogue, Rogue One. I don't like Rogue One. Everyone but David loves Rogue One. No, Rogue I hate Rogue all. Rogue One is objectively the best Disney Star Wars movie. We're not going to talk. We have to talk about he it. He uses the word but objectively. I said, but, I said, so like, but I said, <laughs> but I said Star Wars movie. I would, I would say Last Jedi is the best if it was a Star Wars movie, but it's not. F fair. Okay. What the. Fuck, it's going on. <laughs> um, for, for, but for reference, viewer, go listen to our Star our Wars episodes. <laughs> um, but I think that's my big problem is like this is like for better or for worse, like you said, it carries in the, the baggage of the Lord of the Rings, but it's also too reliant on that. And I think I'm annoyed that it's like I know what the stakes are from the beginning and I know that like this can't resolve it. It'll just kind of flesh it out a little bit more, but I didn't feel the need for something I already know to be fleshed out just a little bit right, more. Right. I don't think that... I, I was really hoping it would be set before this conflict was brewing because mm. that's the main pull of this show is this conflict, I know how it ends. Uh, you know what? I don't think I agree that the stakes are completely fleshed out because, for example, we know that they're going to get these rings of power, but we don't know what... Like, we could build up a character that you love and then see the effect that the rings have on that character. And then you could go, oh my god, I knew that, I never understood the depth of, like, the consequences of these rings being made. And you could still really be on an emotional journey. I think that's fair, and I think that, like, that is what I, I, is the best possible take on this, is that they do stuff that we've imagined but haven't been able to experience. I just don't know if I'm excited for that, and but maybe the show can win me, win me back on that element. I don't know, I just, as soon as the prologue started... Also, like the prologue sucks, where it's like prologue this, sucked. like the stupid philosophical meandering that means nothing, and then it's like over okay visuals. But I was like, oh, okay, just shut the fuck up and like let's get in, let's get into. I it. I guess they wanted to start it with Galadriel monologue, just like the movies, but yeah, it, it but it's not Kate Blanchett, man. Kate yeah, Blanchett, yeah. Not yeah. yeah. I think that yeah, the problem with doing that, I like, I feel like what they should have done is have like another elf do the prologue or something, because then you would it's thematically connected, where it's like we have this timeless person you know describing vast events over the vast ages of middle earth and stuff i think we that that would have been better because morphid morphid clark i think that's her name the actress oh, who plays yeah, galadriel yeah. um she is doing a pretty good job like i was happy with her casting i saw uh, galadriel in her like it yeah. was like a different edge but yeah I she saw definitely it. has she's i can see her doing the sort of squinty eyes like yeah and i'm saying something really intense and blah 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 and i'm like okay so you're de you're really good at pulling that aspect of Galadriel. I don't know how good she is at pulling the sort of like, and I'm sort of mysterious as well. There's like there and was I one have scene something hiding maybe. <gasps> there was one scene where I I was asking myself, and I think I said it out loud, like, is she a bad actor? And it was I think her and Elrond talking, and mm. she was just doing overacting, and I think she was trying to replicate those mannerisms just a little too hard, and it took away from her natural expression. It's like it's like an impressionist who latches on to like a couple things about 
someone mm. and yeah. they can reproduce that really well. Yeah. But then the rest of it they is kind of lackluster. Picture. And as they're talking, you're kind of like, I'm losing Where's the it. I'm seduction? losing it. And then they come in back and like, get to the chopper. And you're like, that's Arnie. <laughs> yeah. Because I think, I think she is a good actor. And when she is doing herself more naturally, it, it works. And I kind yeah. of lose, lose track of the world and I just see her. Yeah. Yeah. But, where's um, the seductive aspect of Galadriel? She's got to grow into it, man. She's got to grow into we gotta it. Keep... She needs that like MILF energy no. first. Another thousand years. No, we we got to keep, uh, we got to stay on Galadriel. Galadriel here for a second. While we're here, let's talk about Galadriel. Wait, wait, but pause before we do that, because you were talking about when she speaks to Elrond, and there was a bad dialogue moment there where I was, like, pissed. Uh, (laughs) They have, like, a pretty good dialogue, Mm. and it culminates in Elrond being like, put up your sword. And then she's like, without it, what am I to be? Yeah. And we're like, okay. And then he goes, what you've always been, my friend. I'm like, Uh... what? What the hell is that? That was, to me, such a dissatisfying ending to this freaking good this exchange like what you've always been yeah. my friend because he's not, she was just gone for like 100 years looking for sauron like <laughs> when is the last time you guys even hung that's, out like, that's nothing to an elf we that that was one of the best parts yes. of the show but we'll 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 talk about that um yeah that's kind of a lame thing because what is he really trying to get her to do he's not trying to be like do this because you're my friend like and that's he's a trying big, to, that's a big part of her identity yeah if you're not a warrior <laughs> you're my my buddy it's like all the elves <laughs> but like that's so funny because all the elves want to do is just chill and like be ageless you know they're just like <laughs> we just want to walk around and uh, have our hands in our robes Sing and be like together hmm, hmm, yeah it's interesting <laughs> <laughs> yeah anyways that dialogue just pissed me off but um, now you go okay Galadriel. So Galadriel, as we said, casting pretty good. Uh, characterization, we can see some of Galadriel in her. Why? And I'm. I, I promise you, I'm not one of these like rating one out of ten on IMDb guys. Okay, I'm not like. I gave it a six point five. Why does she have to be so badass? And like to the to the oh, detriment okay. of the other characters. Use it. Use the word. Say the word. She's n- well. She, yeah, she is sort of Mary Sue. Well, I actually wondered this too because she's like I, an immortal being who's like one of the most powerful elves but, in history. But when that yeah, troll comes leaving. out, she like hicks its ass. Yeah, like, there's like, nothing. We saw Legolas fucking take out an elephant with a hundred people right, by itself. Right, sure. but the key, cares? the key there was that Legolas wasn't the only one doing that. Then Other, he was. He uh, took it by himself. That uh, elf, or the the elephant, Oliphant, the no. Oliphant. Oh, sh- Timothy Oliphant. <laughs> yeah, but we also see like Rohirrim taking them out. We also see like. Uh, other character I don't know he's not like a Legolas single handedly defeats all the all of yeah, right, but, but that it's a group your, effort your argument is completely undercutted by in this show other elves in her cadre are fighting this troll the, yeah they get tooled except not her she just kicks its ass exactly no, but she she's, gets the help she's she runs way up better the than them what no that, that's my whole point is that they they have a whole squad of elf warriors they get absolutely tooled they 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 do nothing to stop the elf at all and then she comes in there and is like, guys, you idiots, this is how you do it. She <laughs> even does the thing where, like, the final blow, she's not even looking. She's like, Whooshing! Yeah. Looking the other direction. And so I'm like, listen. Waiting for the, to hear the thud. I love the, some, some great, cool action, you know? It's like, I wasn't, the, the only, I'm not asking for less Galadriel being a badass. I'm asking for more of the other stuff to kind of, like, equalize a little bit. We, you can show us that she's a really good warrior and that she's better than them without making the other people look like absolutely useless it's like they're not even soldiers i think i agree there i think that like that scene exists to show how cool she is i don't think the problem is yeah it's not her doing that it's that the elves just get like swept aside and yeah that's the end of this that and i would say that. that like she's she, okay, i take it back she's not a mary sue uh because it's like we do see her failing and struggling with things right it's like she she fails at like making her case for sauron and she she's sent off and then she like is forced because of her actions because she's like it's it kind of shows her being like a bad leader because of her actions she's forced to jump into the ocean in the middle of nowhere <laughs> and try to swim back what a badass middle at, of the ocean well, at the same the time thundering sea and at the same time that's kind of like <laughs> oh it. this is for maybe like a point of failure but at the same time oh she's a badass again because she's about to fucking swim across the whole sea I'm like, like can she okay. do that? Is she gonna make it? Yeah, I thought yeah. she's buoyant. I think that was a weird, <laughs> weird thing to do. You're in the middle of the yeah. ocean. It was, it was a good sequence. There was a raft. It was that a was good sequence, up. though. 
the way that it was all put together when the, the sky was opening lands. up yeah. and the meteor was coming down and just when the meteor hits she jumps in the ocean it was, yeah. like, it was really that well was a pretty good scene. i really liked the way that they designed the worm sequence as well i thought it was very imposing you know kind of like see the worm under the raft and stuff you have that big overhead shot and that shot where she's swimming away and the worms like devouring the people behind her i thought that was actually kind of sick yeah I think um it felt a little out of the blue where it's just like uh what's I mean, it happen? literally was <laughs> <laughs> yeah it just uh is that what that expression i never even put that connection together yeah that out makes of the, sense out of the blue out Gotta of the be. blue out of the deep blue um but yeah no i i i, I, I did, in the moment i wasn't like whoa come on i was yeah. like that was probably sea monsters in, yeah. in middle earth it's well, on know. the map right under where it says sundering sea there's like a little sea monster yeah. picture yeah, and in our old map, it's the like, thing that sunders. Yeah, I, mm. It's what people imagined in the real world, but in Middle Earth, it's real. And my feet tingling was triggered. Um, so what that's that really mean? that's well, really my main... Feeling, like, ooh, ooh. And what, so just a couple of the shots made my feet tingle. That, like because you're scared of deep yeah. water kind of thing? I'm not like especially scared. It's just, I think, effective, a effective sequence. Mm. Oh. I will say I forgot that she does get knocked unconscious at the end of episode two and is rescued by Halbrand. Uh, so that's like, but that's not really like her failing and like, it's just like, oh, something bad happened to me. Whoops. Yeah. You know? Um, but anyways, I have to say we're, we're while well, we're on Halbrand, if there is a romantic subplot with Halbrand, I will, 100% there is. I'm going to fucking like, you can I'm tell he's like, oh, good looking I human guy with the hair in the front of his face. Of course it is. So fucking stupid. And the show does not need that. Why not? Fuck that. Lord of the Rings. One of the things that's great about Lord of the Rings is that. There is like there is a romance, but it's an established romance, and it's more this like tragic look at the consequences of romance. It's not yeah. like this new love of people like quipping and you know just like developing a romance. Like yeah, that's yeah. not what this story needs. I will say I don't, I don't hate the idea of them having some romantic tension, but I will say that it is too much if there's also the Arondir Bronwyn romance going on. Yeah. Two like, elf human. We can't have two ha- elf and human romances we in the same show. We haven't talked about that guy yet. Can we do okay, that? Okay, let's now? talk about Arondir. Man, he's boring. Yeah, he's just like he just has like a squinty eyes, like big blowjob pursed lips, but like <laughs> not Jesus. saying anything. Okay. I'm like, are they gonna fucking kiss or what? No, because it's just it's just tense right now. You gotta let it. You gotta let it uh, but they simmer. Have a kid, don't they? What? That's no? not his kid. No. Theo? No, that's, no, I don't think that's, that's his kid. kid. Oh, I thought it was. I mean. Maybe that'll be revealed later, but I don't. They would they would act different if they had already done it. Uh, also, hold on. This is like this is like is they're just kind of testing the waters so with each other. Two still. of those plots in the show. That's so lazy exactly. and boring. Exactly. Not that this even matters anymore, but like I don't think that kid looks like either of the parents. Like if that's his two yeah. parents, he sort right. of looks like because well, she's like Persian. He looks He's like, like indigenous, mixed. like New Zealand indigenous. Oh, I thought he was like mixed race, like half black, maybe. Or are you talking about the kid or the adult? The kid. Oh, the. the apparently, the the guy is Puerto Rican. Sure. Okay, but like you know, he's mixed, it's not that important. Black, but what, whatever, I don't know. That that subplot. He looks really cool. He's he got looks a great fucking. Look. I gotta say that, like you know, we'll we'll talk about the 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 races thing. But uh, when he was introduced, I was like, this guy is an elf. Like yep. he looks. He seems Statue badass. Ask. He seems stoic. Yeah. He seems like he's, oh, seen he's some stoic shit. already. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> fucking but Clint I Eastwood. Like, I kind of yeah. like that. I mean, like I, I like that. You know, uh, Bronwyn is this human healer, and there's tension there, and you know, humans are there like being their messy human selves. You know, like being dirty. And those are servants of Mordo- meat. Morgoth. Like those are ex. They're descendants of men who were allied with Morgoth. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, or allied servants. I guess. Yeah. So whatever. they're like the humans that would be on the the elephants. Yeah, like the, the from the east. So, yeah, those so, are Easterlings, and these guys are Southlanders. Southlanders right? No, but they're similar in insofar we as do like see they allied with the enemy. No. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh. So I like that. There's kind of like this messy human contrasted with this like I'm a stoic elf, and it I makes don't sense get that he's as stoic as he is. Yeah. Because like not only is he an elf, but he's the elf that's gonna just like stand there on a watchtower for 400 years, just looking at nothing. Yeah. And I appreciate that they contrasted that with the human thing and then also his his elf buddy who's like a comedian doing a bad uh, British accent but <laughs> what I don't get though is they're like the, their love affair their interest in each other is established when we enter the story it's not like they're discovering each other right now it's kind of already they're kind of already having these meetings out back where people are like oh yeah you guys like each other don't you but I don't think it's explicit that they are like 
definitely both people know that they're into each other i think they're still kind of like testing the waters they're still kind of like oh we're kind of friends like oh you've i've seen you talking to that human girl but it's not like oh i love bronwyn i just wish let's go away bronwyn let's run to yeah. lindon okay you're right <laughs> Eregion. Yeah. I liked the stuff like the slowly uncovering the orc and like the going through the burrow. The yeah. uh, another feet tingling activation was when he goes into the the tunnel and it gets like really tight and then yes. he dives into the water. Ah! That was very oh. uncomfortable. Especially Especially in the when, best like, way. If you're caving and you're in a tight tunnel like that and it gets wet and he just takes a breath and starts going, it's like you don't know that that terminates in exactly a, you don't know there's oxygen ever again <laughs> yeah <laughs> i've talked about this before in the podcast but this is literally my nightmare like i feel like i don't have phobias except for this specific thing where you're in a tunnel submerged you don't know where have it you opens. ever done it oh no i went and, and I, went I won't in the <laughs> philippines or guatemala i can't remember i went caving once and it was like this is a place they take people every single day so they know that like you hold your breath, you go into this tunnel, it's six feet long, and you'll get on the other side and there'll be a pool. Yeah. Kind of just like in the show. Yeah. Um, but you've never done it. So you gotta like take their word for it, right? And yeah. it, it, nah, it's creepy. You're like, what if, ah. what if my pants get stuck on a rock or something? Ah. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. And then they make it even worse with the rats crawling all oh, over them. Yeah. <laughs> that didn't make sense though. Why would the rats go be toward the water? Because I guess they don't so like the scared. orcs either. They're, they're, they don't like water though. Have you seen Titanic? Rats don't like water? They, they like water. From, they run away from They're water rats. <laughs> all right. <laughs> They got little flippers. There are rats who like live in the water. Rats with duck feet. <laughs> Wait, am I tripping? Water rats. It's called a beaver. <laughs> that was my nickname in college. <laughs> it's called a beaver. <laughs> Any of 18 species of amphibious carnivorous, carnivorous rodents. Jesus. There's tons of water rats. Okay. God damn. Yeah. Do not there want. Go. Do not swim ever so again. What's, okay, what was the deal with the kid finding... Is it a broken scepter or a broken sword? Oh, it looks Theo. like a broken sword. That's Sauron's yeah, yeah. broken sword? But no, it doesn't th that that hasn't happened yet. I think it's just a it's a uh, yeah, Mordor or Morgul blade or something I was maybe. really resisting putting subtitles on. I, I had to put it on right away. I didn't put them on because they were actually on in the first. Why like, would you not have them on? Well, because they were on by default in the first 5 seconds when I turned it on and in the first 5 seconds it was like the per parenthetical closed captioning crap which mm. I hate. I hate. Why can't they just put English subtitles, not closed captioning? I don't want to see engine whirring, children purring. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Horse braids in the distance. I don't want that. I yeah. just want the, the word. words they're saying. Who's whoing? And, and when I turned on, turned it on, it was Galadriel playing with his kids, and there was a bunch of background shit like that. And I was like, "No, nope, I'm out of here." Yeah. And then for the rest of the show, I was like. Mm, should probably put this back on. See, I really appreciate that stuff because uh, I have to turn the volume down because my kid is right next door and in the next apartment. A lot of the time, <laughs> it'll be like unit. it'll be like <laughs> door opens in the background or like sound of door opening, and I'm like, thank you because I would not have heard that and yeah. no, or known it happened. Yeah, sometimes it's spoilers though. I watched like a thriller or a horror type movie the other day with subtitles on, and the subtitle comes up for like screams before the scream happened oh, and I was like <laughs> okay there goes that well, jump and yeah, yeah I think even for like twists and stuff like some of it's supposed to be subtle and you're not really supposed to be made aware of something that was said but the subtitle will make you hy like hyper aware yes yeah anyway all that to say I didn't have subtitles on and I missed what happened when he was explaining to the other kid for the reason that he's opened up these floorboards and has found this thing oh yeah so what's the deal he just found it somewhere well uh, no, he found stuff? it buried there because their ancestors were servants of Morgoth. So then uh, it's it's presumed that this whole area is full of such artifacts. Okay. And uh, yeah. And then he, he feeds it some blood think, later and it grows a little bit. You don't think it's of significance? Like you don't think it's a specifically like a Sau it's like Sauron's tool? It's just a sword from that era? Cause I, uh, it could be, I guess. I, I don't know. I saw I'm, some I'm speculation that the reason the orcs were tunneling under there is that it's similar to the ring race looking for the one ring. It's like they they want to reclaim that. Oh, weapon. maybe. I think yeah. that it must be of significant importance because it's like they wouldn't draw so much attention if it was just a random artifact. Like they would find he would find a cache of of artifacts. I think. I feel like I don't know. I feel like it didn't look that special to oh, me. Oh, really? It looks like a tower to me. It looks like Sauron's Oh, tower. yeah. I mean, well, it looks like the mark. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I I feel I don't know. I feel like I expected Sauron's weapon to be kind of like more grand. But I don't know that it's a weapon. I think it, it could be just one of the tools that he's using to when he's doing his alchemy. Oh, it's 100% a sword. It's a, it's a Mordor. It could be like a uh, scepter or something. Pickaxe. I don't he's, think a, he's a sorcerer. He's a scepter with like a fully flat section. Like 
I don't know. It is could it be. Sword? Hey, I don't know, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but yeah, that, let's that talk was... about the stranger though. Yeah, stranger. So is it for about them sure Gandalf, or could it be another wizard? Well, actually, I th- I've seen a lot of people speculating that it's Sauron, and I think it makes sense. I've seen people talking, thinking that he's Sauron, that Halbrand is Sauron. Well. And- the- and I don't think we've we've met Sauron yet. I think that Sauron will come later. I think that's the twist that the show is. I, I'm kind of in the camp that it's Sauron. I didn't. I actually just thought it was Gandalf. I just assumed it was Gandalf while yeah. I was watching. But I think that's the expectation they're trying. They're going to eventually subvert, because we know that both Sauron and Gandalf are. What are they called? Those angels starts with uh, an M. Myar. Yeah. So when the the meteor comes down, you're like, cool. It's like this angel coming from heaven, and he's going to be like, now he's embodied in this foreign man flesh he has to get used to it yeah that, that's all gandalf shit that totally makes sense he's a white guy with big beard looks like he could be gandalf he's like whispering to the the fireflies that's a very gandalf oh for sure but the, the biggest evidence that it could be Sar- sauron is that the fire is not hot this somebody one of the uh the engineering guys said this as well and i was like what does that have to well, do they with established anything? it in the show two uh, like two other points They're in the like, lord of the rings the movies in you mean? this show in like they established that the fire didn't feel hot. Yeah. What like, does that have to do with Sauron? They're like, our torches aren't hot. The evil is sucking up the heat. And then there's another part <gasps> where the same uh, thing happens. They're like, oh, they go, oh yeah, they go down into the tunnels and then it's like, oh, it's not hot. So they, they do it three different times in the show. And one of the times is with a stranger. So See, that's really cool if they I do that. I feel so dumb I that like I didn't that. pick up on that. But yeah. like, yeah, that's... Uh, so I could totally see that happen okay. where they're like, yeah, the audience has this... They Excellent. bring in this baggage that... This like white guy with long beard, that's gonna be Gandalf. But he you know because what? they're both the Magi or whatever but the frick they ain't Maiar. They both would enter the atmosphere in this same way. They both would have the experience of being these like fetal except, except that Sauron has already been active on in Middle Earth for a long time. Yeah, but his like soul is just trying to get all the pieces together, right? Needs a body, no. needs a sword. He wouldn't come crashing back down to Earth in a meteor if he was already in Middle Earth as like a yeah. spirit. He would just gather some stuff to him or I whatever. have no idea. Well, I do, and that's what Sauron, my friend, would do. Okay, you but I mean, the show me. isn't super accurate to Tolkien. No, but I mean, uh, okay. Here's here's my theory. All right, uh, there's a chance that Halbron might be Sauron, but because Sauron can shape shift, right? He at this point he he has that power. He loses it later, but uh, so maybe there's a chance there. I feel like. At first, I was just like, that's Gandalf, yep. you know, the stranger. Yeah. I'm like, it's super obvious. He's doing the, rah, 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 and then like the trees are bending in and yeah, it's yeah. like that. And he has a relationship with the same hobbits. Same thing happened. Yeah. Yep. Right. Totally makes sense. Um, so that is, that. those are strong arguments. There's also a chance that it could be Saruman uh, because uh, maybe this is the first wizard to land like this. If people were kind of like, oh, we've never seen this. Meteor. Yeah, but the hobbits, they haven't even seen like. No, but they show the other people. Before. They show the other races too, looking up and being like, "Huh?" But I mean, even us, we know what a meteor is. But I would still be him. like, "Oh, <laughs> yeah. sure." I mean, I don't know. So the thing is, that when he talks yeah. to those fireflies, it's so reminiscent of it when is. Gandalf talks yeah. to the moth on it, top of it is, but, Isengard. But that could also just be because I mean, we see Saruman. That's how wizards talk to animals. No, I mean, uh, yeah, I guess so, uh, presumably. But we also see Sauron in, in Lord of the Rings, kind of like singing to the mountains, being like, oh, blah, 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 and that's how he caused the avalanche. No. All of the magic in, well, not all of the magic, I guess, but uh, a lot of the magic in Lord of the Rings is based on music. That's how. Uh, the uh, Eru Iluvatar, the like god in Middle Earth, and his Einar, which are like the angels under which the Maya are. They are Einar. Anyways, they they create the world you like by singing. They go like. Looking first, uh, N- Narnia or Lord of the Rings? Because that's how I it works in Narnia too. Think oh, it's all the work in Christianity. Think Lord of the Rings came the first. word. No, but he wasn't. God singing. spoke. God wasn't singing. But or maybe he word. was. But I wasn't yeah, sure. He said, sense. "Yeah." I mean, anyways, but singing so much cooler. Um. I, I'm not sure which came first. Just I think talking more long. I think Lord. Or I think <laughs> Tolkien started writing about Middle Earth before Four, C.S. Probably. Lewis started about Narnia, but I'm not sure. Um, Dune comes after, and it's the best. Anyways, <laughs> the singing, these he's singing to the firefighters, and it's like, okay, that could be any wizard. You know, they could probably all do that. Well, right. I was thinking, I was like, oh, it'd be interesting if it was like Radagast or something, and his ex- early exposure to creatures that are one with the forest would like point him into becoming like more yeah. of a nature focused oh, yeah. wizard but i i think the most interesting is that if it is sauron if it's gandalf that's so boring there's no way it's sauron that sucks 
<laughs> well, S- Sauron's way more in this story than Gandalf is. Like, Sauron's an established character in these two episodes already, so he's gonna well, appear. But we also know Gandalf gets a ring of power at one point. Although I guess maybe initially it goes to an elf. Anyways, but if they're gonna have five seasons, yeah, we could have Tom Bombadil true. come in season three. We could that's have Gandalf true. show up at the end of season one to make us want to watch season two. Yeah. I feel like it's likely that this may be one of the blue wizards. Uh, like you know, the wizard, one of the wizards that we haven't seen yet in the franchise. Um, if it's Radagast, that would be that would be dumb. You'd be aghast. I mean, that would be that would, like it was. It, it'd be one thing to like give us this red herring and be like, "Ooh, maybe it's Gandalf. Maybe it's Gandalf." And then nope, be like, it's, it's Radagast, the worst one, <laughs> the brown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, uh, yeah. If it's, I, I would, I would prefer it to be like Sauron or one of the blue wizards. Sure. Uh, if it's Sauron, I'll be upset. It could be though. Let's go through the wizards and rank which one we would be happiest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyways, but uh, the Harfoots. Let's talk about the Harfoots. Love them. Um, yeah, I, I think, really like their I depiction. think it's cool that they're, like I said, like proto-hobbits. Like they're they're still just not hunter-gatherers. They're just gatherers. They're nomadic. They're not, they don't have like agrarian society yet. Yeah. Although I guess the humans do. So these guys got to catch up. But I think it's cool. I've, uh, se- I've seen some complaints that they weren't supposed to be here in the second age. They weren't supposed to be hobbits okay. until the third age, but I'm like, okay, wait, are you saying that the hobbits just like weren't on Middle Earth at all, and then they just po- like popped up? Well, they're not hobbits; they're Harfoots. Well, they are ho- Harfoots are a, are one of three types of hobbits, so okay. they're calling themselves Harfoots because I guess they haven't like come up with a name Hobbit yet. That's what I'm saying. But uh, so it's like an um actually in the third age, the Harfoots, the Fallowhides, and the there's a one. There's another type that I forget. Are they, they like they distinct, all, or is it just like they're divided by culture? They're like, like they're like distinct? cultural groups of the same okay. type of okay. of of being of, of they're race. all the same species. Yeah, they're yeah, sub yeah. sub. Got your fro- you got your French bulldogs, your golden retrievers. I guess they would be like our human races. Okay, um, but uh, they they all mix together into hobbits, and the vast majority of them are Harfoots uh, in the Third Age. Does this main character, like the Frodo one, the girl Frodo, is she, uh, like her last name is like uh, Brandy something. Brand, Brandy Foot, I think. It sounds it sounds very reminiscent. Like Brandy she's an a- book? She's Brandy an an- Foot. She's an okay, ancestor. What's the one in the actual? Brandy. Brandy. Well, the Brandy Wine River. Brandy Buck. Brandy Buck. Mary Doc Brandy Buck. So it sounds like she's like an ancestor of them. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like I really, it felt really hobbity. And I like, I think that. That was another thing in the show where I'm like, okay, this feels like home a little bit yep. because their their accents are pretty good. Uh, I've saw some complaints. Yeah, it didn't really bother me too much. But yeah, it didn't really bother me but, because especially because like because you don't have that accent. That's fair. You're just like, yeah, um, that sounds British to me. Um, no, like mildly northern Britain, Ireland. Yeah, they're Irish. sort of like they're sort of like tongue in cheek kind of humur and the, the being silly. I think conservative, I, also overly me, serious. It's the perfect amount of like familiar but new because it was fun looking at all the little details that are different than what the hobbits have and kind of being like and comparing it to what i have in my head yeah but you're like you said it tastes it tastes like mom's chicken noodle soup <laughs> and you're like all right fuck yeah 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 yeah, yeah. um you need to have the hobbits in the show. I like the, the hobbits are the well, window. You into, don't have to you, you do you because must, you but, s- the hobbits are the audience surrogate right right like you're going on this big adventure with giant stakes and you don't you're just out of your element that's us so yeah, I feel about the you're leaving the idea. Yeah. They don't have the Urukai in the show. Then who who do I identify with? <laughs> <laughs> I would I would say that you could do the show without hobbits, but it 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 is a big boost to your ability to kind of trigger people's member berries when yeah. you include them. Without well, hobbits, it Hobbit, feels homely. It, it would just feel like generic sci-fi or generic fantasy without the hobbits. It would feel all, more that all the well, Tolkien yeah. copycats and derivatives that came after they have elves and humans, yeah. and it's all the same except they never have hobbits. But it's kind of funny because that is... I mean, there's halflings, but... It's almost like when you read Tolkien's earlier stuff, it really does feel like high fantasy. It feels more like you're reading, like, mythology. Elf Swords of Shannara. <laughs> <laughs> Not even that, because that that has really, like, human hel- elements and stuff as well. But, like, when you... Like, I think I, re- I read The Children of Hurin a uh, uh, long time. I mean, I was I was a kid. And... That felt a lot less like, all right, boys, we're going on an adventure. Let's go. It's like it didn't feel as as like plucky 
and adventurous. More it like felt mythological. It, it felt very mythological, where it's like kind of detached. You're reading about these larger than life characters, these immortal elves, and like the beginnings of men who didn't know what's going on. And um, yeah, so I think that you could make a show that kind of has a vibe like that. Yeah. But having the Harfoots there is a huge boost to to its relatability and to 100%. its feeling human. Well, it's it's interesting, and I think this kind of goes to the broader like. Uh, my broader perception of the show is like, I think why Lord of the Rings is so good is that it's a human story. I mean, like there's hobbits and dwarves and stuff, but there's like a very relatable story, but with this grander mythology behind it. And it's like, you don't need it to be explicit. You don't need most of the mythology to be there. You just need it to seep through the walls of Moria. You need it to seep through the the walls of Rivendell. You need to feel like there is this grander story, but those grander stories are so inhuman that they're not that interesting. Like, yeah. Most people that read The Silmarillion will say that it's really fucking dry. Yes. And like it's hard to engage with. That's why I never read it. Yeah. Because I'm like, I'm not interested in reading an alt history textbook. Yeah, you know? exactly. But, you know, I, I feel like maybe it would be interesting if I actually gave it a shot, but that's why I never approached it. Yeah. And so I think that <clears> the <throat> show is trying its best. And I think it's doing mostly a good job of straddling those two worlds of the mythology and being explicit in the way that the Lord of Rings didn't really have to be. But then still giving us like the the humanity or the the warmth mm-hmm. or whatever, and I think that that's that's wasn't as easy as people would think, right? And so I think that's a great strength of the show. You guys want to talk to dwarves? Yeah, it's the, yeah. the best. <laughs> so speaking of like things feeling kind of you know mythological and otherworldly and like being ha- like having to ground things that you know that uh, that tension between Durin and uh, Elrond was one of. The, Maybe the best part of the show. I hated it. What? <laughs> I Screw it was, you. I thought it was so contrived. This always happens. David and I are like, that was so, so yeah. cool. And James like, this is stupid. Maybe it's because I didn't watch The Hobbit or something. And this is like the most Hobbity aspect of this show. Like, what? Hobbity? In, like, in terms of like the movie, The Hobbit. The movie's The Hobbit. Like, there's a way more uh, dwarf action. Well, Casa Doom is like in The Hobbit, but it's... And a lot of these dwarf characters and their ancestors and stuff. Are, well, Durin. Yeah. yeah, like the, the main Hobbit in... The Hobbit is the like ancestor, or the the, the main pre- dwarf in the Hobbit is the yeah is not he, the ancestor, the fucking descendant descendant, descendant. of uh, yeah. Durin. This is Jiren the the fourth or something. I just didn't buy. It seems super contrived and made up that this person would be like, "You haven't called, and now I'm really mad. You missed my wedding, me." I just thought that was like stupid. I just, I just thought it was so perfect, and I feel like it was like a a a, a bit of levity after this like intense. We have this like he's doing this, but like a, a sacred dwarf ritual, and it's serious, and everyone is like, "Oh, now you are banished forever," and blah blah blah. And then they like get on the elevator, and it's like, "I'm mad at you." And it's like, <laughs> okay, it's like it, yeah. it it breaks the tension, I guess, and I just, it also like makes us think about the relationship between elves and other races in a way that we haven't really before. Yeah. I mean, like they kind of mention like, that is interesting. How, yeah, I just thought it was the way it came off was really like cross your arms, kind of like. <laughs> But that's dwarves. That's that's, that's, that's I mean, like you're the central dwarves. They're kind of like over dramatic about this ah, stuff. Like you're the king, man. You're supposed to be like mature. Yo, what king do you know that's actually I'm mature? Not, though? No one tosses a dwarf. <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. We are serious. All right. I, I feel like they capture the essence of what has been presented of of dwarves pretty good. Yeah, yes. and maybe I, I just don't like it. And I liked the humanity of it. I feel like I it's a character I can relate to. And like there's like the dynamics with him and his wife that I really enjoyed. And like when she comes in, I'm like, oh, nice. There's like extra warmth to this storyline. And she like, was very warm. Yeah, and I, I really enjoy that and how his at uh, Durin's defenses are slowly being worn down and then he kind of like accepts It was just too cartoony for me. Okay. I guess. Yeah. I like the cartooniness of I it. I mean th- yeah. So dwarven women, no beards, you no, cowards. Cartoony, yeah. Well, so okay. Yes. I, I was reading cowards. a thing where it's like that's not actually necessarily canon. That's like an interpretation of one person saying that dwarf women have beards. Because uh, Gimli says it in yeah. in the other trilogy. But I don't know if it, how can I mean you could they, you they could, did put some hair prosthetics like there's some curly cues on the, on the <laughs> oh, cheeks wait, really there. yeah you didn't notice that in she the War of the Jewels all dwarves are described as having beards including women in later writings published in the Nature of Middle Earth Tolkien did not discuss female dwarves when listening to the characters he imagined um, so why do you think so they it's, didn't? it's not just in the movie it's also in the in the literature no but it's like isn't it one character describing it to someone what do you mean it's like it's not like the narrator being like all women have dwarves it's like a character okay. telling other people i don't know if i think that's kind of a reach if you're gonna say just 
like you're getting information multiple ways from a book and like through a character is that's still like a reliable source of information so i'd say that's still like validly canon but like I guess you could make the arguments less tenuous or yeah. more tenuous. I, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, it would have been cool if all the women dwarves had beards, but like it doesn't matter. I don't know why they didn't, though. Like, why do you think they were scared to do that? I think it's because they want to make it easier for like, it's casual more audiences to understand. Because the way I, I heard it described, and I like this, is that dwarves have two sexes, one gender. And I think that's really kind of fun. That's interesting. Yeah. But like she's on the poster. Yeah. Right. And like if you're saying people would be like, well, I'm not watching that shit. Yeah. I think uh, it, I think it was kind of a missed opportunity to not give them beards. I want to see how they would have feminized the beards, like how they would have braid, braided them. How would they wear them to yeah. look distinct yeah. from the men? I, I feel mean, like that's, that, that doesn't be... align with what yeah. you said so, about one gender. But so they so Tolkien never explicitly said dwarf women have beards, but he did say that uh, people often mistake them for each other, mm-hmm. so they're hard to tell apart men and women dwarves, which is like. They probably have beards, and then later, uh, that 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 thing from the War of the Jewels, the quote, was written by his son. But his son went through everything with Tolkien, and they like worked out the lore together in a lot of cases, uh, especially when writing the like after Lord of the Rings. Um, so, I, I would I would say that the more canonical thing would be to have the women have beards. Mm-hmm. But like, I guess there's some justification for having a show where, where the dwarf women don't have I think it's but, one of those like it's it's more pragmatic and easier accessibility and so they they probably discussed it and chose that maybe it wasn't the best choice I think it was just in like, a show accused of being so woke do you other cis men in the room think that <laughs> if they had been bearded that that could have been a form of trans representation I was this is a point that I was going to maybe bring up is that um I mean should we talk about this now I think we should talk think about we're it there. now let's do so, it so so uh, well, yeah, we'll address the sort of like black dwarves, black elves thing in a second, but, uh, this was an opportunity for them to be like, to normalize the idea that, uh, having a beard doesn't necessarily make you more yeah. male yeah, or, or female. Like if, if you're, fair. if you're a woman with a beard, there's no one on TV where you're like, that's me. Yeah, they, exactly. They could have done that. Exactly. Yeah. So that's like, missed opportunity that, to yeah. Write. And it, it, to me, to me, that's emblematic of the wrong type of uh representation or the more the wrong a wrong headed attempt at representation i feel like you mean the show in general or this beard thing uh the show in general is guilty of this and the beard thing is an example uh when you look at game of thrones there's black characters there's hispanic characters there's all sorts of characters of different races but it they're geographically located so it makes sense within the universe when you go down to the south they're darker skinned when they go over to the the continent that's basically asia then you see more different types of people people of color and it's like we don't need they didn't need to inject this modern idea of like a multicultural diverse society way back into the, the, into the, the, this, is the past. Thing, this is the thing because people think of we think old timey medieval that corresponds to what happened here on earth which is no diversity right like right. this this thing. type of people comes from this region that type of person comes from that region right. and token's world is so racialized uh right like yeah there are, there's like elves and words. dwarves and men yeah. and exactly so um i think that's why p- even people who are completely on board with it being a diverse a diverse vision of lord of the rings i've still seen people want some are like oh is there a, a type of dwarf where they're all black and they live in this part, they want an explanation. Yeah. Whereas the, what the show, the approach the show is taking is like, uh, don't think about it. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It just does not yeah. matter. Which is a very modern frame. But I, I can, I understand why some people in the context of Lord of the Rings, like they want an explanation but or it does matter that be to them. More offensive to the lore, like creating this new whole like racial explanation to things. People will be pissed like, off for that reason. Yeah, I think like no matter what, people. I think there's a quadrant of people that have like reasonable questions as to like why there is more diverse actors in the show. But I think so many people are just like, I want Middle Earth white because it's always been white. Well, they have the justification. <laughs> the the, the justification right? they deploy is that Tolkien imagined this whole universe as a proto, like a pre-Europe, right. a pre-history of Europe. Yeah. And if that's true, then I guess it would have been mostly white. And so. But that's like how it started. And well, then it got bigger than that. Like, there's like 
deserts and like Southlands and like there's it, well, it but that's bigger. that's the argument is that if you're gonna bring in uh, darker skinned people, there's nothing wrong with that, but. Make it make sense. But you the know? problem like, is they're like, coming from the east. But the, the problem is like in the Tolkien world, the people from the east are evil. <laughs> well, <laughs> this is you. This is the root of it. It, For it sure. has like this and, really deep seated kind of yeah. racism to it, where it's like the lighter skin you are, the more moral you are. The high elves. Yeah. The blonder you are, the yes. better you are. Yes, and, and it, it, it's it's problematic. And I mean, there's a whole thing about the orcs and how like you know Tolkien is. Uh, guilty of some race essentialism in his his writings, where it's like dwarves are like this and elves are like this. But like, I, I feel like in fantasy you can do that. You know, we kind of accept that with fantasy to a certain extent. Like mm. when you're going to make a character for your D and D campaign, you, you can choose to be a night elf or a wraith or a you know gnome. I mean, and it's like all of these characters have traits attributes that we are all fine being like yeah most gnomes are like this you well, know that's, that's just part and parcel because it's fantastical whole. but i think i think it's changed though like there's a discussion around are goblins racist and the <laughs> the the new discussion is yeah kind of they're based on like the jewish shyster stereotype and built around that and like yeah so we have to modernize it and i think DD is great because it has such a dynamic lore it's been established but then we are allowed to create it and even to like the micro level of like within your campaign, you're kind of coming up with lore as you fucking go. Sure. And so I think that's great, but Tolkien is so iconic and it's been around for a fucking hundred years. Right. So it's harder to modernize and people defend it harder, but I think that that is sort of silly in the modern world. Like it's like, it doesn't, it, those things don't matter. Like who cares? Like the, well, they do, but to me, to me, the, uh, the best tweet about it was like, uh, how dare they have black elves? Uh, said the people who have who created white Jesus. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, but that's a false <laughs> equivalency. Like, yes, that's also stupid. It's like they can both. You can say both of those things are stupid. Yes, you know they are both stupid. Yes, I, yes. we all. I think any reasonable person agrees. But so it's like to me, that's like okay, great. You're you're attributing this opinion that is held by reasonable people to an unreasonable person, and then using that to discredit it. It's like okay. But it's it's really interesting because what you guys are talking about how like um, if you have these physical attributes they are coupled with these other behavioral uh, attributes and storytelling is so we you it's so heavily deploys that like when you look at the villains in 101 Dalmatians Disney cartoon who do the henchmen look like they look like lower class British people with like hook noses and they're <laughs> yeah, chinless yeah, yeah and and we just see them and we're like oh. Evil. You're a bad guy. You have a twirly mustache. Like, right. That's a bad guy. And if you, you look at a, um, what are they called? Not a brute. Like the, uh, a freaking a barb, a barbarian, right? You're like, this guy's huge. He's got to be dumb. You can't yeah. have high intelligence and high strength. Yeah. Like these, these things go together, right? You're, and as a game like D&D, &D, like you're going to sacrifice. You're going to be squishier, yeah. but be able to do damage. Uh, you can have higher intelligence, but you're not that strong or durable. And, and that's why... And that's why they're different players. Like, otherwise, you would just be OP. Right, And but that that's also uh, an opportunity to subvert things like that by saying, okay, we have this big, dumb, like, seemingly dumb barbarian, but he actually really likes reading. You know, it's like... And you can do things like that because you're playing with these stereotypes that still exist. If we just break down all of those stereotypes you just be like yeah. any elf and any human could be completely the same it's like well okay you, you but that's less to, fun but I, yeah because you cease to have a reason to have these different groups exactly but i think the thing that's hard is like you can't please everyone and like if we do this thing where we give explanations to why the racial differences or why the mixing like there's going to be just as many people that are like this is fucking stupid and so like at one point you have to make a decision and you got to stick with it and it's like they made the decision to just like normalize sure and like and so, like, I the, what, what, the thing yeah. that I land on with this is that, look, it, it's good to have representation uh, because this is already sort of like a bastardization of, of Lord of the Rings. You know, it's like it's on its own timeline. Oh, how dare you? Well, not because of the race thing. I just mean no, because it's I, Amazon. He's rolling in his grave. It's Amazon, and they're making a show <laughs> to make a bunch of money off of this license that they bought. So it's like, okay, look, I, I'm not looking at this as like, oh, this is Peter Jackson who really, really cared about the source material, and he wants to, like, make something yeah. and bring this, like, hero's journey, like, really interesting and good moral story to the world. They want to make money by making by by making yeah. a Lord of the Rings franchise thing. Subscribe. Okay, so yeah. it's already a bastardization of, L of Lord yeah. of the Rings so at that point sure 
let's throw some black and Asian people in here. You sure. know, why not? Let's have the good in, uh, representation. So like I, on that level, I totally get it. And I'm happy that people who aren't white can watch this and see themselves in it. That's great. You know, that we've talked about this many times. But on you, don't, you don't want there to be more people in the world who like Lord of the Rings. Like, don't you want it to? Just <laughs> exactly. More? Exactly. But at the same time, we can't like I can't just gloss over the fact that this is uh, not being true to Tolkien's vision of like he looked around and at all of these cultures, mythologies, and he's like, we don't really have one of those for for Britain or for like, you know, Europe in general, I guess. Other parts of Germanic, Europe, there's all sorts of, but mostly like England and Britain for sure. So he's like, they don't, we don't really have a mythology. I'm going to create something that like feels like it could be a mythology for the UK. But that's how it started. Like that's like before where he got, like that's like the origin point, but it got so much bigger than just British Well, mythology. not really. Like what, and now it is, but not before this point it didn't. But it even would, like he's a person he, writing from his perspective at that time. And if he were alive writing today, he, he wouldn't write it the same way so sure uh, to me this is how i looked at it it's like okay this is meant to be british slash you know european mythology it's like uh making a mythological tale set in feudal china or like the incan empire and having random white people in it it's like you could do that but why so it's like and it would feel weird you know so it's like that's how i'm looking at it mm -hmm. if it you know this is what it was intended to be and now we're broadening it, broadening it, broadening it, and including more people. And that's good in one sense, and kind of annoying in another sense. I just think that we shouldn't take uh, a, 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 an old British guy who's been dead for a hundred years' opinion on race to uh, literally. <laughs> I don't think he has a, the best opinions on. Yeah, I don't think. Well, I don't not, think anyone's so. taking his opinion on race. I think they're just well, looking they're like, at they'll, they'll they'll code it as like you know his original like authorial intent and and like that's what he intended that's how he wrote it and it's like well yeah you're taking his his views on race and mo like bringing that into the modern world was it exegesis this is this is really this is really kind of the same argument as like do we need to make Superman black or something you know where it's like. It's the argument of should we take these old things that people are used to and uh, change them so that now they are a different thing? Mm -hmm. Or instead, should we write new stories to reflect That's, our own, to, to, to reflect how things are now and to put forward what we think should be put yeah, out into yes, the world 100%. instead of trying to take this old stuff and be like these people back then they were they were bad they were not as it's good as we are now it's a clash of two forces we, in hollywood we know what the right thing is now but, uh, and they were bad the so one now force we need in to hollywood fix, is, we need to fix that but like that's so i feel like yes perfect world people go to see new ips just as much as they go to see like established right. franchises exactly but like no, like if we have like right. uh, the stones of Jesus, like no, the stones of like El Shaddar, like versus versus Lord of the Rings, the rings of power. Like, <laughs> yeah, the, people aren't going to go see the El yeah. stones of for power. sure. And th this is why I kind of like it has to be a nuanced thing. Yeah. It has to be a nuanced approach. Like uh, if Amazon decided to make an original fantasy series. Would they make less money and would they get less eyes on? Yes. I don't I wouldn't fucking care in that point because it's Amazon. I don't care how much money they're making, you know? Yeah. So I understand the capitalistic reasons for them doing what they're doing, you know? We need to uh uh exploit this franchise that we have the rights to while also broadening our woke appeal to as many people as possible so that we have the cross section of the mm -hmm. of of like we we're broadening our audience as much as possible. And um Yes, that's the reality of the situation, but that doesn't mean that I can't criticize the fact that they're only really doing this if they if like on one hand they seem like they care about the franchise and they want to do do right by Lord of the Rings, and on the other hand they're just kind of injecting this stuff in because it'll broaden their appeal. And I'm like, okay. Uh, so anyway, I'm saying it's a clash of two forces in yes, Hollywood. Where it's like they're yes. conservative and they want to reuse IPs, but they yeah. also want to, you know, appeal to well, it's, America it's not, today. It's not easy to ride this middle line and to be in this like gray zone and and to understand that you don't have to side completely with one side or the other. That's fair. It's it's hard to be in the middle and be like, you know what, this is kind of annoying and inconsistent that there are random 
black dwarves and black elves and black hobbits mm-hmm. and there's no in universe explanation yep. for that while at the same time being like this is good that we have representation yeah. for more people in a media that sure. is this popular like i think fine for me a part of the discussion that i don't think gets talked about enough is whose responsibility is it to fix this we keep blaming corporations like amazon for s- failing to straddle the line but like isn't it us that should stop watching shitty versions of these established franchises and spend our money on new IPs? Well, to that's exactly them? why I didn't go to see The Hobbit. Yeah. I was like, I'm not paying, not yeah. giving you money for this. I, I saw the first one and then I was like, I'm not seeing that. I, other I think we, we create the market that has made it that the MCU and, and these like recycling franchises uh, thrive in. And we need to be responsible enough to go see the more interesting non-established IP so that that's where we get is these cool new fantasy worlds that have explanations why there's more diverse representation and then we kind of move away from this discussion into our Star Trek future. Yeah. Speaking Uh, speaking of way of moving away from this discussion. Wait, before you said that, I want to put up Wheel of Time as an excellent example of a fantasy world that has justified, uh, you know, multiple races Mm -hmm. of humans in it Uh, because Wheel of Time, it's indicated... I don't know if this is in the books, but in the show, at the very least, they show a bunch of like skyscrapers that are like covered with moss and stuff. Mm. So it's indicated that this is far, 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 far in the future. Many civilizations of of humans have come and gone. Well, that's the thing. As the wheel turns, and so it's like, okay, it makes sense for this society to be made up of a, div- a div- diverse mix of multicultural you know sure. people or whatever. And so that's great. Let's do that. Let's make it make sense in the universe so I don't get taken out. Yeah. yeah. This whole thing highlights how those people who are complaining about the later Star Wars movies were really just racist because like, <laughs> like in a in a sci-fi context, especially where some, it's like not only is there globalization, that's it's intergalactic. Yeah. There's going to be so much diversity and people were so mad that there's like too many Asians and yeah and non-white people in Star Wars. It's yes. like, of course it would be like that. Right. There's no reason for it not to be like that. It's actually more realistic if there's more diversity exactly. in Star Wars. It was so frustrating to have me trying to criticize the sequels on what I saw as g- valid grounds yeah. and being lumped in with these fucking idiots <laughs> who are mad that there's a black guy in a stormtrooper costume. Yeah. Fucking deal with it. Yeah. Okay? There are multi multiracial people in the it's a galaxy. It's a galaxy. There are aliens, there's gonna be black people and Asian people or whatever. <laughs> Green skin, okay. There's black no skin. reason. And they were like, but they're, they're, they're space Nazis, so it'll be only white. And I'm like, no, they're human Nazis. They don't like aliens, but they're all humans. It yeah. doesn't like it's like hair color to them, you know? Yeah. The Empire is woke. Okay? <laughs> Deal with it. <laughs> yeah. Alright, y'all, it's time to go to the hit picks and nitpicks. Nitpicks. Nitpick. The world was so young and never seen a sunrise yet. And then like 10 seconds later, they're having a discussion at sunset. Yeah, it was dumb. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> that was stupid. <laughs> that was stupid. <laughs> yeah. Um, it felt like they were like getting mythological with it, which is cool. But at the same time, it's like. It wasn't really mythological. So do though. you sleep or? <laughs> well, know. they were in the Undying Lands at the beginning. That's Oh, Valinor. I see. Because wait, is it? Yeah, yeah, because when the so. tree dies, yeah, 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 that's Valinor. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, I I could I sort of understood that, but at the same time, I was like, I feel like you shouldn't show us Valinor. Like it should still be like mysterious because well, once we see what it's like to live eternal, that's it's just kind of like oh, so you just have the same. And thing, there's still just... dickhead bullies there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. What the hell kind that of was, paradise yeah, is that? The big problem I have is that and it's, it's so elves. easy to comprehend. Like Valinor should be like bigger than our understanding, bigger than our imagination, right. and to see it be like yeah, it just looks like fucking Middle Earth. Is it uh, heaven brighter. or is it America? Uh, it's it's supposed to be well. This is the funny thing. Or is with that the, the same thing? This God is, bless. This is the <laughs> this is the funny thing with Tolkien's mythology is that there's the like spiritual realm where like Iluvatar lives and the rest of the Einar, but a bunch of the Einar descended into Middle Earth or the Arda is the name of the planet, planet. and they live what then they can't leave. So they are there as these like mystical beings, but they are embodied and they okay. like go and do stuff physically and like stuff. Like the Kardashians. And that's Valinor. <laughs> Valinor is where the Einar live. There's okay. two types. There's Valar and Maiar. And the Valar are like the more powerful ones. And when you die, you go to a specific hall in Valinor, 
the halls of Mandos where you wait until like the apocalypse, which is a bit like it's like Ragnarok. Yeah, Riley has this little smirk on his face when he's saying all this. Like he's like. <laughs> ashamed <laughs> like he's like, he's like opening up his robe a little it's bit like, we're like it's a smirk but it's also like i love it i'm just like i love i love uh reading See, about all it's this. really cool and it works as a book but i'm so glad it's not gonna be in exactly but that's yeah. that's why that's why i'm saying you shouldn't show val yeah, like show it. it's fun to read about it yeah. and like and conceptualize cool. this like otherworldly stuff but once you show it then the magic's gone yeah, same it's just thing a hall. it yeah. looks like a fucking Nit- um, nitpick where the hell is she hiding this damn sword she's like swimming around huh <laughs> it's a dagger. Yeah. But she Whoa. she's swimming around. She doesn't even have anything but this simple dress on. <laughs> and then sometimes the sword's there and sometimes it's gone. I have no idea where she's holstering this thing. Mm. Uh, well, I mean, later they show it just in her belt, but I guess we didn't really notice no. it being in her belt until that point. Kind of along the same lines. They really <laughs> need to design a better way for elves to hold their bows. Uh, the amount of fiddling he does with like putting his bow on his shoulder and around his back and stuff. Uh, boring elf. <laughs> boring uh, elf the first like episode there's like at I miss least Legolas. five to ten times he's just like fumbling with his no he bow. does that cool flippy thing he's like holding it and then he flips it so that his hand goes in, in between the bow and the string bro and just it, like it a clip on your, your armor and just like that would be cool like a better. leaf shaped clip he something did, he never played god of war yo hit pick though that armor that the face armor that was cool yeah that was the so green cool. knight looking kind of oh, yeah who had that that was the elves but the ones that were watching over the people Ar- Aaron Dur- oh yeah they're the they're whatever they're called I like that armor. I forget what they're called they're not cool. rangers but um in the beginning with the analogy with the rocks why does a boat float it's a it, because a rock sinks because it's looking down and a boat <laughs> <laughs> floats because it's looking up I'm like what if you flip over the rock <laughs> that is the Woo! I like dumbest that thing. I liked it so while it was happening I'm like Okay, this it feels really awkward and weird, but uh, f- fine. Uh, but then at the end, I see why they did it because they're like, she's deciding whether to go into the Undying Lands or whether to stay, and she's like, "Oh no, I uh, like the. I'm not like the boat looking up, but like the rock, I'm looking down." It's a weird analogy though, because like sinking down is is shown as negative, but it's like she's this is the right thing to do is go back. And it's 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 because because what he whispered they did a ninety degree turn. It's not for, yeah. up and down. Yeah. It's forward and it's back. Like what what he whispered in her ear was like, "You don't know the right. bounds." She's like, "How do I know which one?" It. So like, the, I feel like they could have kept that line. How do I know which way I'm supposed to go? They just needed to change that stupid boat rock analogy. Yeah, I don't like that. I guess they really awkward. wanted to tie it into like she's literally standing on a boat. Awkward. And there's a couple examples of this kind of awkward writing. I was tipped off to this by Brandon Sanderson, the author of oh. uh, Way of Kings. And a bunch of other stuff. And uh, they, they noted that when Celebrimbor and and Elrond get to Moria, he's like Celebrimbor is like, oh, I really admire how the dwarves treat the rock. It's like, you know, they they treat it with love and care, like for an aging parent. And he's like, they're elves. They don't have aging parents. How? Why would he use this analogy? Oh, oh that's bad. Anyways, um, um, uh, oh, did you guys see the um? When they're talking about respecting the rock, like sometimes you dig and sometimes you you leave it alone. Did you read that as a foreshadowing of the Belrog? Yeah, for sure. I didn't when I heard it. Oh, really? But I see was, how it is. Yeah, that was that was kind of cool. And I like you know whatever beardless dwarf women, black dwarves, blah blah blah. But I thought that character was really cool. Her accent was lacking. Yes. But but she, I, I liked her, and I liked that she was there to kind of give a more warm element to Durin. And she talked about singing. And then in the preview for the rest of the season, we see her like singing. And I'm like, okay, that's going to be a cool scene. Probably. I feel like they gave away her dying at some point in the, the preview for the rest of the season. I don't know. I don't know if it's true, but you just spoiled it for me. I think that that's, I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't see uh, that. God, go back 30 <laughs> seconds and remove what I just said. Uh, my hit pick Should is outside the show. I don't think what so. What is it? This is the people. Uh, is the hilarious one star reviews that exist. For this show, so I read 110. Oh yeah, yeah. I read 110, 110 reviews. reviews. Uh, you did. I wanted to see like how much mentioned like woke politics, feminism, shit like that. Uh, it's about 60 percent mm. of one star reviews will mention like this show is woke, wokeism, woke fest. But there's three specific quotes that are not even like exactly that, but they're so fucking good. Uh, one of them is the men are helpless, the women are self sufficient. 
that's a huge problem with this show. The men are <laughs> helpless, which is bad. The women are self-sufficient, which is also, also bad. Yeah. Uh, this mm. one was fantastic. If you thought the NHS COVID track and trace was a waste of money, well, wait until you see this. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, wait, then, that for on the line yeah, of that yeah. first one, that's similar to being like uh, in the newer Star Wars, all the all the villains are white, yeah. and all the the good guys are diverse. I could see that that's like a similar kind of uh, gripe. And it's like, well, but then the men aren't th- helpless though. Uh, they don't feel like the the like born elf dude. I don't feel like he's help- helpless. Yeah. The women are definitely self sufficient. I mean, Elrond and Celebrimbor are being pretty active. I don't, it's, it, look, these these are dumb. But the yeah, stranger, this, the stranger's helpless as stranger's fuck. Helpless. He's just laying. Here's there. my favorite one because I don't fucking get it, and it feels like a very personal attack to this person, uh, or this, a very deep seated hatred that this person has. <laughs> uh, this will go down the list of complete wastes of money, along with track and trace. Okay, sure. The what? Millennium Dome. And any money Jim Carrey has ever received. Okay, buddy. <laughs> Jeez, the we just learned so much about this individual. Have ever received? You didn't like he anything Jim Carrey Jim did? Wow. That get it, that what a crazy Yahoo <laughs> teaching my kids to do silly voices and faces. Yeah. Uh, Be boy. serious. Cool it with the eyebrows, buddy. <laughs> yeah, so that's my that's my favorite thing about this show is the existence of that one line. Jesus. Man. Um Oh hit pick. Oh in the opening like prologue when you see that eagle getting taken out by a Nazgul that was yeah, fucking yeah, awesome. That was pretty cool. I was like, okay, I'm here for this. Yeah. We I mean you always want to see more eagles. Yep. But don't show us too many. Because then you'll ruin them. That was good. Um, hit pick for me. I mean, it's sort of a hit pick, but nitpick. I don't. I don't know. It's uh, the part where Gilgalad is announcing that Sauron is defeated and like they're going to go to the Undying Lands. And I was like, these brave warriors have proven beyond a shadow of any doubt that our days of wars are over, and Sauron is definitely dead. Yes, very good, very good. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, yes, we've done it, elves. Uh, I don't know. I just thought that was like. Well, that, that's part of her character too, right? And it it is reminiscent of the original trilogy how gondor is like decaying right because men were too they, they mordor just, is right there you can see it <laughs> and they're just like ah it's fine exactly they were they were too lazy and they were too complacent and they just yeah. like they they just didn't lead it like and give it the attention it was they were supposed to and that's exactly what's happening here right right she's like i don't know i just want to be really sure and you're like <laughs> it's close enough yeah nitpick why were the elves subtitled once there's one part where the elves say something like an elf says something to another elf and they subtitle it and the rest of the show there's no subtitle so it's like does that mean that the elves are not speaking elvish the rest of the show they're speaking common tongue? I absolutely hate when shows do this. What the hell? So either they should always be subtitled because they're always speaking elvish. So 100% they're speaking uh, Kenya, Quenya, I don't know how you say it, but like th- all the elves would be speaking that to each other not Westron which is what we hear as English. Uh, you know the men speak Westron, uh, so like, th- th- I hate when shows do this where it's like you have characters who are clearly speaking another language, but we're hearing English for the sake of the audience, and then for a second somebody speaks in the, in the language that. Yeah, there's ways, like, there's ways to do it, like you know, uh, Hunt for the Red October, where it's like there's a Russian ship and like the English people. When they're separate, they speak all in English, so that's easier. But then when they cross when, over, yeah, when you hear the yeah, Russians, and talk they'll do to the good English. transitions, sure. like, where it's like, oh wow, okay, yes, I understand. Yeah, but they still must talk in Russian accents. Well, Scottish Russian accents, because yeah, yeah, yeah. you're not going <laughs> to <attempt that. laughs> Why not? Why not Russian or uh, Scottish? Um, Here's another nitpick. <laughs> it's like when her swords like she's supposed to surrender her sword on the boat everyone's mm-hmm. surrendering their weapons to those like maidens uh, and then she doesn't she eventually um when, when she or she does when she finally lets it go it makes a sound like it's just floating in between their hands but she lets it go you hear like a shing sound as if it's just been like taken out of a of a sheath it was like <sighs> every time uh, yeah it's like every time a gun or a sword is handled that must be a sound effect like if yeah if i have to hand you a pistol yeah. it's like yeah. <laughs> it's because uh, Foley artists get paid by the sound effects. Um, uh, do they? No, no. Yeah. Um, sort of nitpick, or I don't know. I hated the fact that the comet came out of the like. I hate the fa- I hated the fact that that's how it happened. Like it comes out of Valinor. No, it's well, it's not Valinor. It's it's the heaven or like the actual spiritual oh. metaphysical outside of uh, Wait, time. That, that's where the boat was going. No, no, no. When Gandalf cra- or not Gandalf, the stranger crashes in the comet. Yeah. I, I just hated how they did. That's how they did it. Because I'm like, this isn't how like 
That does, it's like that's like you know like God and the up. angels they're up there in the clouds yeah. and they crashes down to earth I'm like okay they should have done a Terminator style it's like style. a dimensional thing it should be like oh, like reality warps and Tr- stuff Terminator style yeah bzz, bzz, yeah and then sure. there's a sphere exactly Gandalf lands with his like fist on the ground a, yeah, <laughs> yeah. and he's nude and he stands if, up if they did a perfect copy of Terminator Big I would have been yeah. come with me if you want to live <laughs> oh yeah I'm super into that somehow there's a garbage truck somewhere yeah. sure <laughs> I fucking uh, love this. Yeah. I love this so much. Hit, hit, hit pick for me is the two girls, uh, the two Harfoot girls carting Gandalf around in the cart yeah. while he's like uh, unconscious and they're like, what are you doing? Oh no. And then they like let him go by accident. Like, oh, go get him. I was like, oh, this feels, this feels yeah. fun. This feels like fun Hobbit hijinks in Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Oh, another maybe uh, reason that this could be Sauron is that he just, he does evil things things like he does he does these acts of aggression the stranger right like he's like the trees are bending over and you know powerful things are happening but that could go either way because he's just in the new body and doesn't know what he's doing yet but what about when he does something and then miles away her dad's foot just breaks like, oh, I don't think that's related. What's, it's just that's a coincidence. I feel like that's a setup that that was. The, coinc- I thought that was like indicating that he caused. No, this. no, 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 no. I think that's a that's. I mean, maybe, but I don't think that's how it was framed. It didn't seem that way to me. I feel like that was like what because she was she was supposed to help because she wasn't there. Yeah. Then he had to do it himself, mm. and he broke his, okay. broke his leg. I really like how. And they, later, he the stranger's going to come heal him. Oh, I could see that. That's or maybe that Persian chick. The healer? The who? The healer. Oh, healer. Oh, maybe, I, yeah. Maybe. maybe. But really then like, that would mean that the men would know about the hobbits and that would be a whole thing. I don't, I don't know. So. I really like the way that in that sequence, the the broken foot, it's at first but when it happens, you're like, oh, that, that sucks. Oh, man, he's going to have to heal up and do that. But then the realization that there are migrant people and they're going to keep moving. And yeah. like, they've already established like they have to move. Yes. It was like, oh, this is a really big deal. Like right. he's immobile now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, when and Gandalf that, heals him, it'll be great. And that's a hit pick on another level because uh, the origin of the hobbits is that they came over from the other side of the Misty Mountains and mm. settled in the Shire. So they're saying, we have to migrate, we're going to move, which is like canonically, that's what they did. And that you know, th- that's why it doesn't bother me that they're, it's like, the hobbits aren't supposed to be here in the Third Age yet. It's like, okay, but it's actually, it, they didn't pop out of the ground. Yeah. They they're were not around. Recorded. Yeah. So yeah. they're they're going. They were nomadic and they were moving around all the time and hiding. So that's why no one knew it about them. They're going to go sh- settle in the Shire yeah. and and stay there. And that's when they kind of mm-hmm. enter into the world. Um, so that was good. Questions: What do the dwarves have in that box? Uh, Silmaril, probably. Oh. The jewels. Okay. What are S- the Silmaril? Are, are, are really? a set of jewels? I, like I Dragon Balls? No, they're like they're like magic uh, magic stones. I, I, don't, I don't even know. Are those going to be used to make the... Is that like the uh, source material from which they're going to make the rings? Like they're going to melt one of those down or something? Uh, no. Because so. that's what I... It kind of seemed like to me, like, oh, they have the raw material. In, t- in uh, terms of like the plot setup of we're going to make a forge. Oh, gems crafted by Feanor. I don't, I, he's in one of the very early important elves. Uh, from some essence of the two trees of Valinor... Before the first age, they're most prized of all the wonders crafted by the elves and were coveted by many. So, yeah. You think that's what it is? Uh, uh, and you already spoke to one of my other questions, is which is the character they're introducing at the end of the second episode that on the ship, that silhouette? You think it's just a Numenor person? Yeah, because this is a whole thing. That's so just like the high elf the version The Numenorians, of they, they weren't around in the first age. Uh, there were men, but they were like inconsequential. Okay. Uh, then... Uh, Elros, Elrond's brother, uh, who was a half elf, chose and Rachel chose a mortal, <laughs> chose to be mortal, Hello, and Rachel. he uh, had uh, men descendants, and they were like the best men, and they were like you know um, because they had some elf in them, they, they were like they <laughs> race essentialism, uh, they you know were good, the the good men and all the other men were like bands of horrible people, corruptible. So Eluvatar. Himself, a Louis Vuitton. raised uh, an island in the middle of the ocean for them to go and have a cool kingdom there, and so they were a seafaring race of men who like mm. were legit about their shit. Too legit to quit. And later they come, they might. Oh, well, sound like the the Dutch. There's a whole thing that happens. Numenor sinks back into the sea later, and they migrate to Middle Earth and found Arnor and Gondor, mm. and so that's where those places come from. But anyways, the Numenorians are like pre. Gondor humans live a very, very long time, hundreds of years. 
Uh, the Dunedain are Numenorean. Yes, they're descended. Okay. Yeah. Got it now. Aragorn. I get it. Yep. That's where Aragorn comes from. Anyways, uh, yeah, it's probably the Numenorians. I don't know. Cool. Um, I'm, I'm out of hit pick nitpicks. Nitpick Galadriel. <laughs> they're on the raft at the end of episode two, and the, she's pulling on a string. On, like, she's pulling on a rope on the raft as if it's doing something. I, I was noticing that. She's just like, she's like, there, she's talking to Halbrand, but at the same time kind of like looking back at and him. She's, and she's punctu- like, she's I'm, punctuating working on, it. I'm working on something. I'm steering our raft. But so she's also like, punctuating the conversation like, I'm going this way. Pull. Yeah, exactly. Like, what do you think you're doing? Nothing's happening. You're on a fucking raft. It's supposed to be the rudder, I guess. It's That's yeah. dumb. Um, and uh, oh, that was weird. Uh, my nitpicks got mixed up. And then uh, in that same scene, like, later the storm is happening, and she's like holding onto the stick, and she's like, "Bind yourself to me." And what was her plan there? Like, why? Why do they need to bind themselves? Well, she knows to look up. So then she can keep him floating. What? He's oh, joking. I'm joking. I, I didn't understand what her strategy was there. And then, right, as I was like, wait, why? <laughs> Lightning strikes the boat and explodes. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, what? Is this a thing that would happen? That a could little, happen. A little tiny raft and a lightning storm in the sea where there's waves and stuff way higher than them. And then lightning strikes that and explodes something? Oh, it could explode. Yeah. It could explode, yeah. Okay. It's a with magic. I don't know. It was just it. like a sequence of kind of confusing things, and I was like, huh? Ah. And then he swims down to save her. She's unconscious. They get to the surface, and she's super fully conscious. I'm like, oh, let's go let's swim. I'm like, okay, what? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. The end of the, that that scene was just so confusing for a number of reasons. Um, yeah. And that was annoying. So it's a nitpick. Um, also a weird the mid pick I guess it felt weird to kind of have basically like a horror movie in the middle of an El, uh, Lord of the Rings thing With when the, the orc shows up oh, in the house yeah. and they're like hiding and, they're, uh, and it's like yeah but that was that was similar to when the hobbits are trying to run away from the orcs that are gonna eat them and then they run or the even forest in the and first meet the one where they're hiding underneath like from the Nazgul that's true that felt pretty pretty horror-y yeah okay but then, what, orcs are super strong? I just, it, it annoyed, yeah, that, he was throwing her across he, the room. I was like, like, what's up with that? He tossed the table like it was nothing. And I'm then like, what? The thing that annoyed me was when the kid was hiding the cupboard at the beginning of the sequence. It was like, mom, like, I'm hiding, closes the door. I'm like, why didn't they just book it? Why didn't they just run right then? Yeah, exactly. And then just keep hiding. Do you know why that orc is so strong? It's because they share properties with uh, the Jedi and the Sith. And by, <laughs> based on the amount there are, they split that right. strength up. And so there's only there's, like a few thousand orcs currently. Yeah, so, you know, they're yeah, yeah. really fucking strong. I really appreciate you criticizing this <laughs> key element of the sequels. Thank All you, right. David. I think let's wrap it up for Final for nitpick. This. Okay, go. Season one was filmed in New Zealand, which is proper. Oh, they said nitpick. Well, the nitpick is that season two is going to be in the UK. Save money. That's a mistake. Tolkien it, it will stop rolling in his grave, but Jackson will begin. There, He's not dead. <laughs> apparently, there are some mountains in the in England, but they're all very short. So, see, it'll be a lot of CG enhancement, is my guess. That'll be fine. That's like one of the things that made the Lord of the Rings trilogy feel so cool is that they like actually filmed in New Zealand, and there's like such brilliant rolling. Yeah, but the landscapes. graphics sucked back then, so they don't need to do that anymore. Oh, like, yeah, the CGI everything. Exactly. Mm. They already, is it? Attack of the CGI. Clones is back. Yes. All right. Um, we have something else to talk about though, which Wait, is do we? there was no episode last uh, week. Oh yeah. And we lost it. Not for lack of trying. We actually recorded one of the best it was episodes so ever. Yes. It was a great episode. It was on Annihilation, which is one of Riley's favorite movies. It was a great conversation. You guys will never hear it because the audio didn't record, so we couldn't release it. Yep. And but we never tweeted or anything to tell you that, so we're sorry. It was uh, it was so good. It was it was the episode that I was most excited for. Annihilation is one of my favorite movies. Don't even ask us. We'll never do it again because um, it doesn't work that way. Well, no, the video I, with I wanted to audio on like flow plane or something. I thought there was zero audio. I think the camera that was recording would uh, have the audio. So, I, like, I can I, see bars on I it. So it would be really that. shitty. But no, but like we the, wouldn't want to use that. You wouldn't want to use that for like a real um, episode. So like, flow I have my slogan and my rating for Annihilation. Okay, sure. Okay. Slogan, exploring the themes of self-destruction, grief, identity, and the unknowable has never been so thrilling and gender-inclusive. Lessons on how to make an excellent all-women movie and any kind of movie can be taken from this alternative interpretation of Jeff Vandermeer's also very good novel. I gave it a 9.25 out of 10, just so you know what you're missing. It yep. was, it's, it's an amazing movie. I had a long and pretentious slogan that ended with a 7.4. <laughs> uh, I liked, I liked it. 
Uh, I think the visual splendor, the atmosphere, the alien, and the actual cosmic horror are like 10 out of 10. But yeah. I think the dialogue and like the interpersonal drama was the weakest part of the film. I, gave, right. I remember this stupid shit. I had the stupid slogan. Science shiz. Killed by a grizz. I forgot how good this movie is. 8.75. That's the yeah. best one. That's that best was one. hilarious. You guys should have been there. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, use use that information to imagine what uh, an amazing episode that was. It was really uh, good. We talked yeah, about all right. Stuff. So, all right, that's enough. Yeah, we'll do. Fans. I think we've been going uh, for like now, close to two hours. Not playing next week. Yeah, we will. Next week we're doing a uh, Galaxy Quest. Galaxy yes! Quest. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm excited to see it actually. Have you never seen it since no. you turned it off as a kid, or you didn't watch it? I never watched it. I think it was on in a room I was in for like half an hour. Okay, but no, it's the best Star Trek movie. All right, guys. See you next week. You can tweet us at TJM Pod. You can email us hello at They're Just Movies. Dot com. Dot com. You got to stick your tongue out when you say dot com. Hello. Love See you. Up.